this movie obviously was, you know, did really well here and and everyone whatever. Was, whatever. But you have to admit, Mission did a lot better overseas. I think it made like three times as much overseas. Yeah. And it, have you put any thought or the studio into how to make this work? I mean, you went all around the world. You really tried to push it overseas for the sequel. You know, thinking maybe big star, maybe get Tom Cruise. I mean, I'm not kidding. You know, some kind of thing like that to help the overseas. We're not there yet in trying to sort of figure out like a, the kind of overseas gimmick, but I think that it's not a bad idea to begin thinking practically in that way. You know, what can be done. You know, to sort of help open it up. I think that you know, if you look at something like. Um, Batman Begins, for example, and you see how that movie, what that did internationally uh, and domestically, the sort of scale of it, the size of it, the success it had. The movie was, you know, so well done, so entertaining, that people often, you know, found it watching the DVDs, the Blu-ray, and um, that when the, you know, the sequel came out to that film, there was more of a built-in audience that just simply didn't exist prior. So the hope, that's like the ideal dream version, and certainly no one is looking to expect any kind of Dark Knight numbers on a, on a Star Trek sequel, but the idea of, of looking at ways that hopefully the quality of the cast of the, of the first film, the fun of the movie, that that will eventually over time mm -hmm. touch people who would not normally have gone to see the film in theaters. So that when a sequel comes out, they're, they're converts because they've actually seen the film uh, that was made originally. So right. that would be the, the, the goal. In terms of casting, sure, casting international star would be a really good idea. What does uh, moving the target to 2012 do for your development? Why are you so angry? That's, okay. the, third that's the third time you've done that. I know, that's, I why, I did it. that's why I do it, because who I was better start than with you? That. To give JJ, the I am not angry today. I just that want to, to know how does yeah. how does the why, why in denial? <laughs> no, um, I think that uh, I, you know it's like closet space. You use what you've got. I mean, the more time you have, the more time you have to use to hopefully uh, you know make a better movie. So, and what sort of themes are you circling around? As it's way too early to even talk about themes, but. Uh, Speaking of themes, uh, Jacino's music's playing. I hear, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. I'm for a Jacino fan like myself. <laughs> are you gonna get Greg Grunberg in uh, this time? Other than on, more than voice. Only if Greg Grunberg has his way. I would like to, except for his acting. No I'm kidding. He, he is the greatest. Greg is my best friend. Um, having Greg in the movie would be, you know, I don't know how we can't. We have to, in Great some shirt. form. I don't know. We got, he's got to be something. You know, I, I actually tried to get him to be in the movie originally, and he was unavailable. So, um, but having Greg as a red shirt, my, my favorite thing in the world, actually. So. And we keep getting, we keep hinting at do, dealing with Khan. Are you leaning more pro or con again, for or against Khan to be a character? Seriously, the worst pun. <laughs> I didn't ever. I'm sure it was a total accident. It I don't was. believe you. Um, I, I, I'm. We're not even in that in yeah. at that stage yet. But uh, you know, the the fun of where we are on the sequel is we could use some, you know, of what was done before in a new way. But you know, we we, we haven't even figured out what we would use yet. So it's very early on. At the press conference, you said that you were writing a movie right now that you're hoping to d to direct yes. next year. Can you say anything about that? And also, what your thought process is on possibly directing MI4 and the Star Trek sequel um, after you direct that other movie? Uh, well, I, the the one I'm directing, uh, hopefully next year. It's it's. Sorry, I, I hate that recorder. So I just. I'll make it. I'm so sorry. No, sorry. I apologize. Uh, I, I'm just in the very early stages of that too, or you know, sort of middle of that. So it's it's uh, nothing that would be really interesting to talk about. Uh, which is probably going to preclude my availability for doing Mission, although I so love what the script is, what the story is, and Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec are writing a, a script, and they're doing an amazing job, so I'm, you know, I'm already sort of envious of anyone who whoever ends up directing that movie. But you'd be available to direct the Trek sequel then, because that goes into production the year after. Uh, in theory, I would be available, and, and you know, it, it, it would be fun to do. I, you know, but since there's no script, it's hard to sort of talk about directing a movie that doesn't, the story doesn't even exist. But you want to do something in between the two? Uh, ideally, I would like to. Yeah. Okay.